Hi friend, I'm Katie. In this video, I'm going to share with you three tips for coping with pregnancy after loss. You know how it feels like no one quite understands where you are right now and the mix of emotions that are running through you at all times? Well, I do. I've been there. And I created these three tips specifically to help you through this time. I'm Katie Huey Harrison, founder and editor-in-chief of Undefining Motherhood, an educational site and community where we help women cut out the noise so you can make informed decisions to do this mom thing your own way. Today, we're talking about pregnancy after a miscarriage or loss. And while I really wish none of us even needed this conversation, unfortunately, we do. So I'm thankful that you're here to let me help you feel more empowered in your pregnancy so that you can enjoy it as much as possible with as little worry as we can manage. It's a tall order, I know. I'm going to give you three tips to help support you through this time based on my experiences with a lifetime of dealing with anxiety disorder and 13 years of therapy for it, along with two pregnancies following four miscarriages. So I have a lot of experience in this arena and I hope that my knowledge and what I've developed for myself can help you just a little bit. Tip number one, be an observer of yourself. And here's what I mean by that. When you're feeling stressed, I want you to just take a minute and notice five separate things. Number one, what specifically am I worrying about right now? Number two, was there an obvious catalyst for my anxiety? Did something specific really clearly cause it? Number three, what action do I take in response to my emotion, if any? Number four, how does that action make me feel immediately after I take it? And number five, how long in the future does it take for this anxious thought or feeling to return? Now, I know that's a lot, so I'm going to give you an example from my own life. This if you don't know it, is a fetal Doppler. A lot of pregnant moms use fetal Dopplers to check the heartbeat of their baby so that they can be reassured that everything is okay. When I was pregnant with my son, Jack, I decided that this was really going to help me in overcoming my pregnancy anxiety. But I quickly discovered something. The reason I wanted to use this Doppler was because I was having a specific anxiety that was making me need it specifically, I was worrying that his heart wasn't beating anymore. And after four losses, you know what? That's understandable. We worry about their hearts beating. So that was my biggest fear. And I needed to do something to alleviate it. So that was the thought. I had an anxious feeling accompanying a thought that was, oh my gosh, my baby's not alive anymore. So then I took an action. I pulled out this fetal Doppler. I put it on my belly. I found his heartbeat sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. And once I found his heartbeat, I could listen and I felt better. Sounds like I found a good tool, right? But I didn't, not for me. For some people it really is, but I am not one of them. Here's what I discovered. Yes, I felt better immediately. But long-term, I actually started worrying that he was not alive more and more and more frequently. And I started pulling out this Doppler more and more and more frequently. And what that meant was that I was having that stress. I was having that fear. I was going back to this really anxious emotion constantly. And so what I discovered was that because I was getting anxious more often and of more intensity, clearly the Doppler wasn't helping me. It was hurting me. Now it does help some people. So this is why we wanna take the time to observe our emotions, our actions, and our reactions. And then we wanna write them down. You don't have to stop in the middle of having these thoughts or feelings and just write them down immediately. But once you've gone through them and you're to a good place where you can, just sit down and jot down these little bullet points. And I'm gonna give you somewhere where you can go so you don't have to take notes on what those five bullet points were, cause you'll have them. And then you'll be able to see, are there patterns emerging? Because patterns are a really big thing we're looking for. And you'll notice a lot of ways to help yourself just by observing your emotions instead of living directly in them. Once you've been writing these down for a little while, I want you to start taking notes on four more questions. Does a certain behavior make you anxious? Does a certain behavior calm your anxiety? Because if so, you wanna repeat that one as long as it stays calmer. If that anxiety calms, is the interval between anxious periods getting longer or shorter 
more intense or less intense? And finally, what does all of this information tell you about how you're responding? This will help you figure out what's going to be useful for you to do to support your anxiety and what's going to actually hurt you and cause you to ramp up your anxiety more. Because this is something that a lot of us do during pregnancy after loss. We find things that we think make us feel better, like peeing on sticks in the first couple of weeks to see if the line gets darker. And then what happens? We get more and more and more anxious. So if we can practice figuring out what these habits are and we can improve them, we're also over time gonna really lessen our anxiety by following through on not doing the actions that we discover are harming us. Tip number two, take things one step at a time. One of my favorite mantras for pregnant mamas is today I am pregnant. And for me and my levels of anxiety, I actually had to make it even more specific and say right now, I am pregnant because I would worry, well, yeah, sure I am today, but what if I start bleeding tonight? So what I'm trying to do with this is we're trying to pull ourselves out of this spiral of thoughts that we go through where we start worrying and then all of a sudden we go down this rabbit hole of worry. We want to stop that, kind of imagine a stop sign, put that stop sign up in your brain and then pull yourself back to the present. So for me, right now, I am pregnant. This is a different pregnancy. It's not the same story. It doesn't have the same ending. We can't control the outcome. We can't control how our pregnancy goes. Oh, mama, I wish we could, but we can't. What we can control is whether we try to remain in the present or whether we allow ourselves to have those anxious thought spirals. And when I say allow ourselves, please don't feel guilty when you're having those spirals. We all have them where we can't easily avoid them. And that's fine. That's part of anxiety. It's part of worry. But if we're actively working to train our minds to come back to the present, to remember where we are right now, that's where we're going to see these spirals improve over time. We're going to see them lessen over time. So when you're sitting in that ultrasound waiting room and you're having horrible anxiety, believe me, I know it. Instead of letting yourself go down the rabbit hole of all the things that can go wrong at that doctor's appointment, instead, just remind yourself, right now, I'm pregnant. This is a different pregnancy with a different outcome. And are those fears going to come right back? Yeah, probably. But the more you're able to bring yourself back to the present moment and remind yourself of where you are right now, the more easily you're going to be able to overcome these anxious feelings and these spiraling thoughts in the future. Now, before I share my third tip, I want to know what is a coping mechanism that has helped you during pregnancy after loss? Comment below and we can create a big bank where we can all have a lot of exercises that we can do together to collectively enjoy our pregnancies more, calm our worry just a little bit. Tip number three, find a metaphor that you can use to describe your emotions to the people around you so that they can understand how you're feeling. Now, let me tell you what I mean here because I know that sounds a little bit complicated. You know, one of the hardest parts of the pregnancy after loss journey is how many people just don't seem to get it. They expect us to be excited, overjoyed, over the moon. And we feel some of that, but we also feel a lot of fear and a lot of terror and a lot of anxiety. And we just need them to understand that we can't always be happy. We're not always looking forward. We're not always ready to talk about it or to believe that this baby is gonna come home safely because it, that's really, really hard for us. But this support network is so important. When you're going through pregnancy loss, when you're going through pregnancy, and of course, when you're raising children and dealing with parenting after loss, oh my goodness, you need and deserve a support system. So what this activity is geared toward doing is helping you not only grow that support system, but really helping, helping you deepen it, taking the people who you're closest to and helping them understand how they can support you. So I'm going to give you an example from my own life. This is what I used during my pregnancy with Jack, who is my now four year old son. I was so scared. I never until he was in my arms believed that he was going to come home with me. And so I had a really hard time with people who wanted to talk about it, be excited, buy me gifts, plan a shower, plan a nursery, and I just wasn't in the headspace for any of it. And so what I did 
to talk to these people about it is I came up with something that they specifically would understand. Because remember, loss until it's real in your life is a very abstract concept. So trying to understand what you're going through is hard for the people you love. But if you're able to talk about it in terms that are going to be more familiar to those people, so you can make it just a little more concrete, a little more tangible, that's really going to help them. So for me and my family, Southern girl that I am, this was football. I was raised on football. We love it. We went to all the Georgia games until I got claustrophobic in the stadium once and started refusing to go. And so that was a really easy way for me to talk about this experience that they would understand. And so here's what I started telling my family and my closest friends as a way to support me. I said, look, I understand that you're so excited for this pregnancy. And believe me, I want to be too. And I'm working on being excited as well. But that baby crying in my arms in the hospital, he's the end zone. He's a touchdown. Everything else is just a small play to get there. So when I got that first heartbeat and ultrasound, that's a big play. That's a first down. Yes, that's a huge deal. We should clap. We should cheer. But we're not going to storm the field in excitement because we're far from the end zone. That was just one play. And then when something else happens that's good, that's great. It was a good play. But it may not even necessarily be a first down. So I asked them to try to temper their excitement for me based on what was happening. And I actually got to a point where my mom, who is the most optimistic of the bunch and thus was kind of the most difficult for me emotionally, <laughs> would say after an OB appointment, well, what play was this? And that was the first thing she would ask because she knew how she could respond once I told her what the play was. Using this metaphor helped me so much and I find myself coming back to it during my current pregnancy as well, four and a half years later and I'm still using it and I'm still telling people about it because it made that much of a difference for me. So come up with something that's gonna work for your people, for your family, for your friends, whoever your village is going to be and already is. Come up with your metaphor and help them help you. Want more help and support going through your pregnancy after loss journey? Tab below the links in the description and download my free pregnancy anxiety workbook where you're going to get four exercises that you can do along with pages to help you complete those exercises. I talked about some of them in this video. Some of them are going to be new for you. You're also going to get goal trackers and calendar pages so you can keep up with your moods and look exactly for those patterns that I was talking about. Links in the description go grab that free workbook right now. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you found this helpful. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Coming up next, we are talking about announcing your pregnancy after loss and preparing your home for baby. Stay tuned. I'm excited to see you soon. Bye.